Hey Tubes, I'm in my side yard here and I, I got a big uh, section of trees here, a wooded, wooded lot and it's got some large trees and I got a lot of vines growing and stuff like that but that doesn't bother me because you know I have a, a highway nearby and it you know it just uh, keeps the noise down plus I I don't have to see all the traffic and stuff but uh, I'm starting to get a poison ivy problem and I tried to uh, get rid of it uh, with some, well, I'd say limited success you see these little things here the yellowish things there like that one back there it was all poison ivy all this is poison ivy and I was using brush be gone or uh, with those poison ivy uh, stuff uh, and like I say it's I've had limited success with it you know these things this poison ivy only looks like it got sick you know it really didn't kill it but some of the smaller stuff it did there's more poison ivy back there I mean there's another one back here you know I mean it's actually some of it's actually going in going into trees growing in the trees but like I said I had limited success let me see here so I guess one here you know it turned this one a little yellow and everything but then there, there were other ones that it killed most of the younger ones are killed you know more of it it's all over this whole this whole little section here is uh, is full of it there's some more it just just turned yellow I know it's I know it's gonna come back you know it didn't kill it here's more just made it sick but like I said it was a lot more I don't know if you see the brown leaves on the ground they were the little ones and uh, got rid of the little ones pretty good they killed a lot of the other stuff here you know that, uh, that got in the way here's another one just uh, just pissed it off a little bit so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use something else I'm gonna try something different and uh, see how we make it out see? this whole old wooded area is, is all starting to get overgrown with poison ivy and uh, we don't want that. Alright, let me show you another section. Here's a little, another section here that I, I did just uh, so you can get in and out of the truck here. That's where I park my truck. But uh, look how good it did with this other stuff. You know, this here is like uh, grape vines and Virginia creeper and stuff like that. But it it killed this stuff till it was crispy. You know, and that was only a week. And then you look down and there's poison ivy. Just turned it yellow. It just made it mad. So uh, the stuff actually works good on uh, on lesser stuff than poison ivy. All right, going in the backyard here behind the pool and stuff. We're just way over there, back over there on the other side of the property. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I only got like about an acre here. But uh, back here where I keep my sheds, uh, like on this little side here, I like the pachysandria and stuff. But like I say. Look, we're getting poison ivy there, there, and it's, it's growing in all over the place. There's a big uh, tree growing right there. You know, I could try and chop it down and uh, or pull it out and stuff, but I don't want to get involved with that. You know, you can actually see it. The stuff, uh, you know, actually stands out. Let's go around here. Yeah, you might be able to hear some of the the highway, I got a highway, a state highway right behind me, but all this, all this big stuff all poison ivy you know, it looks bad, but I think I can tackle it I mean, look at it it's actually growing in the trees more of it down here yeah like I said, I, don't, I like this little section of woods behind a house here because it, it keeps the noise down and keeps me from seeing a highway, but i got to get rid of this poison ivy. Plus, it's, it's killing some of my trees, so I'm going to try to reclaim some of this. Let me show you what I'm going to use. Like I said, I've been using Brush Be Gone and, and Ortho Poison Ivy Remover, but uh, with very limited success. And I'll show you what I found. All right. Here's the stuff I've been using for years for uh, just cleaning out brush and poison ivy and stuff like that. Like it says poison ivy, poison oak, brush killer and stuff like that. And, and it always worked okay. But 
I couldn't find it anymore, you know. Brush be gone. Couldn't find it anymore. And what they did is uh, Ortho had just changed the name of it. Here it is, Poison, poison Ivy uh, and Tough Brush Killer. But they got Poison Ivy Max uh, featured right there. But uh, let me show you something, all right? They call it Brush Be Gone, but then if you look at the active ingredient down here, it's uh, they call it uh, Triclopar. I've heard it pronounced different ways, but uh, most of the time it's Triclopar. Triple par, and it's eight percent. And the inert ingredient is ninety-two percent. Inert ingredient could be anything; could be water. That's why they uh, they just put that. So uh, look at them ingredients, and then you check out the the brush and poison ivy killer. There it is down here. I don't know if you see it. It's a little darker. But anyway, same same ingredients. Eight percent triple par. 92% inactive ingredient or inert and in, inactive same thing inert ingredient but uh, anyway that's what I use and uh, I've, I've always been uh, reasonably happy with it but then uh, I figured I'd do a little research and, and see what I come up with and I came up with this stuff it's, uh, it's just uh, trickle pour and you can tell it's it's uh, commercial and professional use because it's it don't have any pretty flowers on it and uh, graphics and everything. It's just a white container uh, with the with the packet with the ingredients. And let me show you what what it says here. It says uh, triclopar. Let me see, triclopar, but it's 61.6 percent. That's that's almost. Eight times, let me eight, sixty-four. Eight. That's almost eight times as strong as the stuff you get on the shelf. Now this is a gallon, and this it sounded like it was expensive. I think I paid sixty-nine dollars for it or something. But I think I, I think you you pay like twenty twenty-five dollars for one of these, and you get a whole lot more. So I'm going to try this stuff, and this this is inert ingredient only uh, only thirty thirty-eight percent inert. So, uh, I don't know, it looks like it's a whole lot more powerful, and it, it is commercial, so I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the description for you of where I got this, and uh, a lot of these might not need a gallon, I mean, I got, I got a, a decent sized piece of property here, and I got a big problem, but uh, I think you can get this stuff in quarts and half gallons, and I'm not sure if you can get in pints, but uh, once you get to this link, you could uh, do a little surfing and get yourself a quart of it, and it won't be as bad. But uh, I'm going to try it, and then, uh, and we'll see what it does. And hopefully, and like I say, it, it should do a lot better than uh, this 8% stuff. All right, I'm going to go out there and do some spraying. All right, I'll, uh, I'll uh, give it a week, and then uh, I'll tape some and uh, see what it looks like. All right, it's actually only been two days, and I'm seeing... Uh, the poison ivy is starting to die a little bit, and I'm uh, I'm happy with that. And I thought there was going to be a little more incidental damage, you know, but uh, the pack of Sandra seems to be taking it good. There's another one down here. You see there? Poison ivy's all curling up and stuff. But if you look at the the, I guess that's English ivy down there. It's not hurting that at all. And the pack of Sandra was doing well. So that surprised me. Now let's keep looking. Okay, this, this poison ivy is crawling up even more. And uh, there's a lot more of it. And the pack of Sandra under it is looking a little sad. I mean, it don't look like it's dying. It is uh, wilted a little bit, but uh, we'll see what happens. We'll give it another uh, three or four days and see what it looks like. Now here's more of it. Poison ivy's crawling up and, and dying. And like I said, a pack of sandra underneath there. I wasn't very specific, man. I was just spraying that shit. I didn't care what I killed. Look at it all back here. All crawling up. And the pack of sandra under it seems fine, so there's more of it. Right, like I said, that's only been two days. I will check back and, and see what it looks like. More of it crawling up down there. Yeah, I'm, so far I'm happy with the results. There's another one right in the middle. See, that's about uh, five foot away. 
and I, I just pointed and sprayed and made sure the poison ivy got it. So uh, nothing around it really died. Very surprised. Right, here's more. I don't know if you can tell the difference, you know, the, I mean the curled stuff is the poison ivy. And the pack of sand underneath it seems to be doing fine. If, that, if that's what it is. There's more curled up. Two days. Real happy. While I was at it, there's another poison ivy, but uh, while I was at it, I had uh, two stalks of milkweed here I sprayed. We're going to see how that, uh, that fares. Alright, next time I see you, it'll be another three days or so. I think I might have referred to that as milkweed earlier. That's actually pokeweed. We get a lot of that around here. So we call that pokeweed. I'm ready. Alright, while well, I was at it, I sprayed some rogue weeds here, and uh, that's what it did in two days. It's already brown. There's more over here. But over here, I sprayed this too, and this uh, doesn't seem to be affecting this, whatever. I don't know what that is there. But this here, I think it's uh, wild grapes. And uh, maybe that was a weaker solution, I'm not sure. But uh, it doesn't seem to be doing much. I sprayed this little patch of grass here, too. Okay. Alright, it's been about a week now, and uh, I'll try to make this quick. This dead stuff here is poison ivy. And around it, there's uh, no collateral damage. So, uh... I don't know how, how well, I, I mean, it's, it looks dead now and everything, but uh, I'm not so sure it got to the root. We'll, we'll have to wait till next spring to find out. But, uh, uh, so far, I'm, I'm very happy. All right, let's go to another spot. All right, over here, there was uh, a lot of it. I don't know if you can see it without blending in with the rest of the stuff. But all the dead stuff is poison ivy there. And that's a big vine. And here's the rest of it. And uh, this this little section looks like it's doing all right. And then I didn't I didn't cut the vine at the tree there to get the rest of it out of the tree. And once you get past the dead stuff, looks like it's uh, it's just uh, doing fine up there. So uh, I'm gonna have to get that and, and chop that down. Like I say, I don't know how well it got to the roots of this thing. So, but there was a little uh, collateral damage here. You see the pack of Sandra. I must have got a little over exuberant, but uh, that's okay. I knew that would happen. All right, here's more of it. Like I said, this, this is the big trees and stuff. And even back there, I was just uh, spraying into the wind, really. But uh, it killed it killed the leaves and the berries, but until next spring, we're not going to know if it got the root. Right over here, we got old poison ivy, too. And uh, this is my little experiment here. This was that pokeweed. And it doesn't seem like it, uh, I mean, it looks like it, it may have pissed it off a little bit, but I don't think it really killed it. I know a lot of people say uh, use vinegar and salt and stuff like that. I've used that stuff before, and it kills the, you know, the leaves and stuff. But they, they come back in a, in a week or two, so it's it's just a waste of time, really. All right, so what else? Let me let's uh, let's go look at and see what else it killed. All right, here was that grapevine. After two days, it didn't look like it affected it at all, but after a week, it it seemed to kill it. So that's a good thing. And then I, had, I did some grass around it. It, it killed the grass. It kills grass real good, so uh, that's good. Matter of fact, all in here, I sprayed it with just all, like a mist and everything. It killed all this grass. But this here, this here is ornamental grass. I think they call that blood grass. It used to be red, and now it lost all redness. But uh, well, here's a here's a tip right here. Is red. That's what the whole thing used to look like at one time. But anyway, uh, I sprayed it over here because I, I want the bed, but I didn't want this uh, this road grass, and I sprayed that, and that doesn't seem to affect that. So uh, if you're trying to kill blood grass, it might not be such a good idea with that stuff. Okay, over here was a rock bed, and I had it continued on here, and I wanted to kill all this grass in here, and it, it did that. So it works great on grass, and then over here along the fence line, I wanted to get that, but this here is a, a domestic hibiscus, and I sprayed around the bottom, and I didn't know, but it was an open, had an open wound down here, so it looks like it might have, might have killed that. This might come back, because they're pretty, they're pretty, pretty sturdy 
bushes, but uh, that was my fault, you know. We'll see what happens. And this here, I don't know what that is. Oh, you know what it is? That might be, uh, I think that might be crepe myrtle that just started growing on its own there because you got a, a crepe myrtle tree over here. It's got uh, one bloom left, I think. Yeah. So I think that's what that is. But anyway, I'm happy with the results. And if you guys want to try it, like I say, I'll leave a link in the bottom. And you don't have to buy a gallon of that stuff. You just have to uh, maybe try a quart or pine, wherever they sell it in, and uh, see if you like it yourself. But uh, we're going to see next spring how well it really did. Alrighty. Enough of this.